Welcome to Year 9 Geography. My name is Gabrielle and this is Lesson 7 in our course on ecosystems. In this lesson, we're going to be learning about coastal wetland systems, coral reefs. Before we begin our lesson, let's do a starter activity. I'd like you to set a timer, either on your phone or on your computer. And once you've done this, set the timer, write down as many kinds of coral reef plants and sea creatures as you can in one minute. All right, so pause the video now while you answer that question in your notebook. When you're ready to compare your answers with what I've written, you can restart the video. Welcome back. How many did you get in your one minute timed activity? Well, I wrote down these plants and animals. Clownfish, giant clam, sea anemone, shark, parrotfish, sea cucumber, coral, seaweed, and seahorse. Compare your answers with what I've written on the screen. You can add some of my answers to your own list if you would like to do that. Okay, let's get into the main part of our lesson today about coral reefs. What are our learning objectives? Well, firstly, to investigate the features of coral reefs, to geolocate examples of coral reef environments, and to explain why coral reefs are important. So where do you find coral reefs? Study the map. The location of the world's coral reefs are marked in orange. What do you notice about the distribution of coral reefs around the world? Use geolocation terms to describe the distribution of coral reefs. So spend a couple of minutes writing down some notes about where coral reefs are located in the world. Use words like hemisphere, equator, coastline, and so forth to help you with your description. So pause the video while you do that now, and when you're ready to compare your answers with mine, restart the video. Welcome back. Well, here is a model answer that you can compare with what you've written in your notebook. So where do you find coral reefs? The world's coral reefs are located around the equator, Tropic of Capricorn and Tropic of Cancer. The waters in these regions of the world are warm and fed by consistent ocean currents that transport warm water and micronutrients consistently throughout the year. These conditions allow for the formation of corals, which support reef ecosystems. Why are coral reefs dist distributed in this way? As corals photosynthesize, they need three things. One, they need shallow water to allow sunlight to penetrate. Corals rarely grow below 50 meters in depth, hence their location at coasts or around islands. Two, they need lots of sunlight, hence they are found in the tropic regions. And three, they need clear water to allow light to penetrate. So what are coral reefs? Coral reefs are underwater structures made from calcium carbonate secreted by corals built up over thousands of years. Corals are formed by polyps, which are tiny animals, small anemone-like creatures that settle on bare surfaces and proceed to grow. They have a limestone skeleton. The calcium comes from the shells of the small creatures that the corals catch. Polyps also contain algae, plants, which capture energy from the sun and make sugars, photosynthesis. 98% of the polyps energy comes from this algae, the rest from captured prey. They are colorful because many different algae reflect different colors in the sunlight. So we're going to watch this video now about coral reefs, and then there will be some questions to answer afterwards. So you're welcome to take notes on this video as you watch. Coral reefs. Their bright, vivid colors can be seen in tropical ocean waters around the globe. Beyond their brilliant appearance lies a hidden significance. Coral are animals. Though they may look like colorful plants, coral are in fact made up of tiny animals called polyps. These invertebrates can range from the size of a pinhead to a bit larger than a basketball. 
Each polyp consists of a soft, sac-like body topped by a mouth covered in stinging tentacles. To protect their soft bodies and add support, the polyps secrete limestone skeletons, or calicles. Corals are megabuilders. Polyp calicles connect to one another, creating a colony that acts as a single organism. As colonies grow over hundreds and thousands of years, they join with other colonies and become reefs that can grow to hundreds of miles long. The largest coral reef is Australia's Great Barrier Reef, which began growing about 20,000 years ago. Coral reefs are some of the most diverse ecosystems on Earth. Though they cover less than 1% of the ocean floor, coral reefs are home to 25% of all marine creatures. It's been estimated that up to 2 million species inhabit coral reefs, rivaling the biodiversity of the rainforest. The reefs provide rich habitat that helps protect young fish as they grow. Coral are translucent. Coral reefs get their rainbow of colors from algae, or zooxanthellae, that live in their tissue. Though corals use their tentacles to capture some food, most of their food comes from the algae they house. When coral become stressed by pollution or other factors, they evict their algae. Coral bleaching results revealing coral's white skeletons. Coral provide a window to the past. As coral grow, their limestone skeletons form layers, similar to tree rings, that vary in composition and thickness based on ocean conditions at the time. With some coral reefs growing for thousands or even millions of years, scientists can study these layers to reveal what the Earth's climate may have been like in the ancient past. Unfortunately, climate change is putting coral's future in danger, along with the millions of species that inhabit the reefs and the half billion people that rely on reef fish for food. Warming waters result in prolonged coral bleaching that kill coral reefs or leave them vulnerable to other threats. Without significant action on climate change, our oceans could lose many of their colorful reefs by the end of the century. Okay, let's take a look at the questions now. One, true or false, corals are animals. Two, what are corals made up of? Three, how do polyps protect their soft bodies? Four, how long does it take for a reef system to form? Five, what is the world's largest coral reef and where is it? Six, when did it start growing? Seven, what percentage of all marine creatures are reefs home to? Eight, how do polyps get their color? Nine, how do corals capture their food? 10, what is coral bleaching? 11, how can scientists tell the age of a reef? And 12, what is threatening reefs today? So take a moment to pause the video now. You can copy those questions into your notebook if you like. And if you need to, you can re-watch the video on coral reefs before you answer the questions. When you're ready to check the answers, restart the video. Welcome back. Here are the answers to our video questions. One, true or false, corals are animals. This is true. Two, what are corals made up of? Polyps. Three, how do polyps protect their soft bodies? By secreting a limestone exoskeleton called calicles. Four, how long does it take for a reef system to form? Up to thousands or even tens of thousands of years. Five, what is the world's largest coral reef and where is it? It's called the Great Barrier Reef and it's along the northeast coast of Australia. Six, when did it start growing? About 20,000 years ago. Seven, what percentage of all marine creatures are reefs home to? Roughly 25%. Eight, how do polyps get their color? From zooxanthellae algae that live in their tissue. Nine, how do corals capture their food? With their stinging tentacles. 
10. What is coral bleaching? This is when corals get stressed, they evict their algae and thus lose their colour. 11. How can scientists tell the age of a reef? By the striations on the limestone skeletons left behind by dead corals. And 12. What is threatening reefs today? Global warming and ocean acidification. How are coral reefs being threatened? This is mostly down to human activity, especially one, tourism, that is tourists trampling the reef, boats damaging it with their propellers and anchors, two, commercial fishing, drag nets along the seafloor destroy reefs, and three, climate change, Warmer sea temperatures cause coral bleaching, which kills them. Sea level rise means slow growing, growing corals will die off due to lack of light. And stronger and more frequent hurricanes will damage reefs in coastal locations. So we're going to explore this issue of ocean acidification and how it is damaging coral reefs around the world. We're going to do some questions about this at the end of the video. So you're welcome to take notes if you need to. From the tropical waters in Australia to the coasts of Alaska, coral reefs are an important building block of ocean life. Even though they resemble colorful rock formations, coral reefs are actually made up of living, breathing creatures and are home to countless varieties of marine life, including moray eels, seagrass, and giant clams. And these coral reefs are in danger of disappearing forever. In the Caribbean alone, we've lost 80% of the corals over the past 30 years. Rebecca Albright of the University of Miami is researching the impact of carbon dioxide on the life cycle of coral. So if we're losing them at that rate, for any species to persist, you have to be replacing them at an equal or greater rate, or else you will eventually lose them. One of the main threats to coral reefs in recent years is the growing acidity of the oceans. What's causing ocean acidification? When carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere through natural processes or through burning of fossil fuels, ocean water absorbs about 30% of it. The reaction of carbon dioxide and ocean water forms carbonic acid. But when increased levels of CO2 enter the atmosphere, the reaction rate also increases, producing exponentially more carbonic acid. Carbonic acid reacts further and forms hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. Bicarbonate ions also react to form hydrogen ions and carbonate ions. The free hydrogen ions in the ocean water increase the acidity of the water, or a decrease in its pH levels. How can increased ocean acidity negatively affect coral reefs? Acidification is interfering with the ability of, of corals to reproduce and replace what's being lost. Carbon is present in seawater where the tiny invertebrate animals, or coral polyps, use calcium and carbonate ions to form calcium carbonate, which are the chemical ingredients that make up their hard protective shells. When these shells grow together, they form a structure, or reef. Coral and other shell-building organisms like clams, oysters, and snails need carbonate to build their shells. As the pH levels in the ocean decrease, fewer carbonate ions are available. The decreased pH of the ocean water also causes the shells of corals and other shell-building organisms to dissolve. In Albright's lab, she and her team are simulating conditions that will help them study how increasing levels of carbon dioxide could affect coral reefs. We can predict, using modeling, what we think under the last 10 to 20 years, what declines in calcification would be out in nature. And they seem to parallel what we've actually seen. And the study we recently released showed a 75% decline in the number of individuals that actually reach the reef under scenarios that are projected to occur by the end of this century. And so you can imagine if 75% of people couldn't reproduce, what that would do to our population over the next 100 years. But coral reefs are surviving and can recover and grow again. And with a better understanding and more monitoring of how acidification is affecting the coral reefs, corrective measures can be taken. Now, 
Research how much the pH level of ocean water has changed over the last 60 years. How do you think we can prevent ocean waters from becoming more acidic? Okay, let's take a look at the video questions now. Fill in the blanks in the paragraph below to explain the process of ocean acidification and how it is damaging coral reefs. CO2 is released into the atmosphere from something processes such as volcanic eruptions or the burning of something fuels. About something percent of this CO2 gets absorbed by the something. The reaction between this CO2 and something water results in the formation of carbonic something. Carbonic acid breaks down into hydrogen and something ions. This then causes the pH of seawater to become more something. This acidity then interferes with the coral's ability to reproduce and use calcium carbonate in the seawater to make their exoskeletons. In short, this process is called ocean something and has led to widespread coral reef destruction. Question two, how does acidic ocean water pH affect shelled creatures such as crabs? So take a moment to pause the video now and fill in the blanks in that paragraph with uh, a suitable word. And when you're ready to check the answers, restart the video. Welcome back. Here is the completed paragraph, which you can compare with what you have in your notebook. CO2 is released into the atmosphere from natural processes, such as volcanic eruptions or the burning of fossil fuels. About 30% of this CO2 gets absorbed by the oceans. The reaction between this CO2 and ocean water results in the formation of carbonic acid. Carbonic acid breaks down into hydrogen and carbonate ions. This then causes the pH of seawater to become more acidic. This acidity then interferes with the coral's ability to reproduce and use calcium carbonate in the seawater to make their exoskeletons. In short, this process is called ocean acidification and has led to widespread coral reef destruction. Question two, how does acidic ocean water pH affect shelled creatures such as crabs? And the answer is it causes their shells to dissolve. Well, that brings us to the end of lesson seven, coastal wetlands, coral reefs, and to the end of our course on ecosystems. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit voyagerschool.com.au for more valuable courses in more subjects for high school students. See you next time.